Welcome back to the latest edition of Kansas City's Northeast Newscast. I'm your host as always, Paul Thompson, and this week I'll be joined by Kansas City Area Transportation Authority Safety and Security Chief Hugh Mills. I met Mills in the office of Nima Shafe, the Communications and Marketing Specialist with KCATA, to talk about an upcoming collaboration with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office to help increase the safety and security of all transit riders in the Kansas City area. On the morning of Tuesday, March 27th, KCATA announced the deputization of two KCPD police officers in a move that KCATA CEO Robbie Mackinnon said, quote, lays the groundwork for more collaboration between Ride KC, KCPD, and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office as we continue enhancing regional transit. Earlier in the week, I talked with Mills about how he came up with the idea for the deputization, the importance of bus safety for passengers and operators alike, his own experience driving a bus in his youth in Arkansas, his own work history, which includes more than two decades in the U.S. Army, and his most recent work with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. But first, we open with a story from Mills about a previous media appearance in which he opined off the cuff on his feelings about filmmaker Michael Moore. Do we have your attention yet? Without further ado, here's my conversation with KCATA Security Chief Hugh Mills. You were on the you were on the, on the air Alford. Veterans Day last year with Mark Alford. Uh, it was myself and a young deputy. The young deputy was a was a uh, Desert Storm veteran, and I was there as a Vietnam veteran. Mm-hmm. And we were both in uniform, and we were both talking. And the deputy was scared to death because he had never been on the radio, much less TV. Now he's on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And Mark Alford asked me. Um, he asked him what, what your favorite war movies were, and then he asked me the, the same thing. And then he asked me, what do you think about guys like Michael Moore? And without a leading question. thinking, I mean, I forget that, you know, that I'm in front of a camera. I said, well, Michael Moore is just a nincompoop. And the whole studio breaks up. Everybody, uh, Lauren Halifax, yeah, beautiful girl, far yeah. superior to... Mark Alford in every yeah. way um, starts laughing, and Alford starts laughing, and then I realized that I was laughing. What did Alford think he was going to get out of that question? It had to have been about what he. Was oh, that's for. that's as that's as clean a response as I would have given. That's as good of a cold open as we could probably have for this discussion. Uh, this Paul Thompson over with the Northeast News, sitting right across from uh, Chief Hugh Mills. Now, your role with KCATA, I believe, I'm looking at press release as we talk. You're the Transit Security Division Chief. Yes, security, safety, and training. And what does that typically entail in terms of a day-to-day? On a day-to-day basis, the security side involves the security of this campus, uh, this Word. facility, which is bordered by 18th Street on the on the, the, the south. The Ride KC facility. Essentially, right. uh, Truman Road on the north, uh, Forest right. on the west, right. and Lydia. Yeah, just just west side. of 18th and Paseo. Due south of... Uh, of uh, manual tech. And I think we've pretty much nailed it from, from all angles here, so people so, uh, have a pretty good idea. Campus uh, campus security is, is a 24-hour day uh, concept. Um, largely my view, and that's fairly static. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't change much. Uh, the, the more uh, fluid of my responsibilities uh, would be the, the uh, personal safety of our riders and our operators. Uh, that are in the buses day in and day out, whether they be in Missouri or Kansas. Um, uh, And, of course, along our bus stops uh, and our facilities, again, in both states. Uh, And then the training dimension has to do with uh, oversight of our safety department, uh, which is heavily involved in the training of operators, both new and old, Mm -hmm. recurrent training and, and new driver training. Um, and those folks address uh, continuing needs, if you will, uh, to update drivers on what they ought to do and how they do their day-to-day job. How long have you served in this capacity then? I've been here since, uh, but, but, well, about a month and a half. And how, and in the time that you've spent here then, uh, do you have a grasp of how difficult the job is for the operators on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, yeah. Take a, take a, uh, take a 50,000 pound vehicle and go drive it uh, down through the streets of Kansas City. 
and allow anyone who wants to to get on with you, um, which will range from corporate executives to the homeless mm -hmm. to the mentally ill. And try not to get uh, too distracted. And, and try not to be distracted and, and try to deal with the the uh, uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, construction. Mm -hmm. Kansas City is, is well known for that. Awesome. Uh, if you find a street you like and it's great, a week from now it'll be torn up and have orange cones all over. Mm -hmm. These guys and gals have to drive all over the metro area, um, potholes, aggressive drivers, folks that don't want to give the bus the leeway to go first, mm -hmm. but want to sneak around it. Um, th those are the kind of things that that, uh, that I think are very difficult. That if you've if you've never driven a bus, I have. Not a city bus, but a school bus. Mm -hmm. um, you appreciate what these folks do every day, and they do it from from four o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the morning. Right. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. If um, if you kind of has had a little bit more of appreciate an appreciation for the work that goes into it, coming uh, since you came into the job, but it sounds like you've had experience before yeah. driving a school bus, so you well, kind of have an idea. Well, I got to I got to tell you, my experience as a bus driver is something that you will never ever see again. Um, I was a sixteen year old. 17-year-old um, student at Hot Springs High School in Arkansas. My father was the superintendent of schools. Summers, I was required to work. I didn't have summers off. Mm -hmm. I worked at the bus barn, mm -hmm. and I washed buses, and I moved buses, and I worked on buses, mm -hmm. minor stuff, change mm -hmm. of wheel, that sort of thing. But a requirement popped up to drive uh, a program called Head Start. Mm -hmm. And these are pre-elementary schools from the from the uh, uh, less advantaged community, mm -hmm. and I had to pick them up on one side of town, drive them right down Central Avenue in Hot Springs. So this is for summer classes. Summer classes, uh -huh. right past the bathhouses, the Arlington Hotel, the mm -hmm. Majestic Hotel, and deposit them at a school across town, and then pick them up in the afternoon, and take them home. Mm -hmm. Now I was in 1960. 566, a 17-year-old with a regular driver's license, a CDL did not exist in, at that time. Right. And I'm driving, I've been driving probably a car for a year, mm -hmm. and now I'm driving a school bus full of inter elementary school. Yeah, they probably wouldn't let that fly anymore, wouldn't would they? Wouldn't let that fly. <laughs> so, did having, anything ever happen? No, 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 okay. no. Had, had no issue. So the you handled kid, yourself with a plum. The kids were, were incredibly well behaved. Um, happy to do what they were doing and then uh, and I'm driving a 44 passenger school bus you, you know right down through the middle of town mm -hmm. uh, today I think insurance probably wouldn't allow that yeah I think that would be um, considered too great of a risk I would think so <laughs> yeah well cool um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about sure. I guess this is this is all in a, sort of a lead a segue here to the March 27th ceremony that's going to be happening at this very facility right mm -hmm. where Two yes. KCPD officers who are part of your unit or part of your department right. are going to be deputized? I don't Might not know. happen during the ceremony. I don't think it's going to be during the ceremony. So the suggestion being that maybe they already have been deputized or they no. will be sometime in no, the future? They, they have not. They have not been. Okay. Here's why we're approaching Well, it. yeah, that's what I'm getting to. What? Yeah. The, and sort I'm, of the I'm happy to share that with you. There are a number of organizations and activities within the Kansas City area law enforcement community who might find some benefit in having a sheriff's commission which covers the whole county. Mm -hmm. Typically, a municipal police officer uh, has jurisdiction within what's called a bailiwick, what is municipal mm -hmm. employer. The city limits of Kansas City, the city limits of Independence, whatever. Mm -hmm. There are task forces and, and things like that that will take a federal oversight, pull in a municipal officer and grant him federal credentials. Mm -hmm. FBI, um, Secret Service, uh, not Secret Service, uh, uh, U.S. Marshals and so on have task forces. In this case, it, it occurred to me that Jackson County Deputy Sheriffs, uh, and we have two assigned mm -hmm full-time, one day, one night, to the, uh, 
to the organization. Mm -hmm. They have full authority as a peace officer anywhere in Jackson County. Mm -hmm. But it, it occurred very quickly that if we had a disturbance at a uh, bus stop, let's say at Walmart out on 40 Highway at I-70, mm -hmm. the bus stop is actually located in the city of Independence. Right. If a deputy sheriff needed some assistance from a purely um, theoretical point of view, the Kansas City guys have no jurisdiction right there. Mm -hmm. Could they come in mutual aid? Sure. Could independents come? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, could other Jackson County deputies who were not assigned to ATA come? Sure. But in order to have a more fluid relationship, it occurred to me, why don't we deputize the two Kansas City officers assigned to, to ATA. And what does that actually mean? In that just means terms? that their authority, they become a uh, deputy sheriff. Uh, it simply grants them law enforcement authority to make an apprehension, to assist a deputy, um, or to write a ticket, if it were to come to that, in a jurisdiction beyond their own. And this would sort of be an issue that might present itself as well because I know the ride Kansas can City system goes into the Kansas side as well, right? Sure. So if you're out in Leewood or something dropping somebody off at, I, I guess, maybe a, a college or something else. Sure, there, Johnson County Community College. It, it goes, yeah, ride Kansas City does go out However, there. this process only covers Missouri oh. and it only covers Jackson County. Jackson County deputy sheriffs have no authority in Kansas. So what would you have City, to do in a situation like that if something did come up? I, I will I will say at this point, without uh, going further than I really want to go right now, mm -hmm. we are studying with the uh, Office of the Directors of Public Safety for Missouri and Kansas a proposal which would fix that problem. Interesting. Well, maybe I'll ask this, and it might be a, a better way for the general public to kind of wrap their heads around what's going on with this program here. Can you maybe point to an incident where it would have been beneficial to have these guys deputize? Sure. Um, uh, a, a deputy sheriff uh, is, uh, is, is dealing with a, with a bus complaint, a disturbance on a bus outside of, of uh, uh, Kansas City. His Kansas City partner, who is fairly close, would be responding out of his jurisdiction to back him up. Mm -hmm. Let's say the deputy is uh, uh, contacts a guy who's a disturbing party on a bus and is immediately attacked. Mm -hmm. The deputy, and we've had that both ways. Deputy assisting Kansas City, Kansas City assisting deputy. Mm -hmm. um, this simply allows the Kansas City officers to respond into eastern Jackson County mm -hmm. um, to assist the deputy in doing what they're doing should the need arise. Um, will, will they routinely be going into eastern Jack and writing tickets? No. Mm -hmm. But they could. They for, don't example, have to hesitate. for example, mm -hmm. If you're an officer and you're assaulted, you generally do not write the charge of assault on your person right? because you, you're a biased participant. Mm -hmm. uh, another officer has to write the assault charges on you. Well, if a deputy gets assaulted, there's not another deputy on duty. Mm -hmm. So why not let the Kansas City officer, who is his co-worker, write that charge if, if necessary? And we would set it in the same court. Uh, where it actually occurred. Hmm. This is not unique. Um, uh, Missouri State Patrol officers, uh, conservation officers, both carry the ability to write a ticket in the county municipal court. Okay. So simply adding a Kansas City officer is, is, is uh, absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. What, uh, I guess, led you to recognize the need or the potential issue that, that could come up? related to this? The, the initial thought, and I had two, uh, what's the best way for them to back each other up? Mm -hmm. Remembering that we're on a different radio frequency. Kansas City and Jackson County do not operate on the same radio frequency. Mm. So in the initial thrust of how do we do this better, I put the county deputy on 
the police frequency. Our radios allow that. Mm -hmm. I wanted the uh, the county deputy hearing what the police were doing and vice versa. So I brought them from county air to KCPD air. Mm -hmm. The KCPD dispatcher knows that there are two deputies on the air in center zone, one day, one night. It then occurred to me, hmm. um, uh, if if uh, if KCPD is tied up or Independence is tied up or the county, there's only five guys on the on the county patrol right. generally during the day. Um, if those guys were all tied up, my officer is now in some jeopardy. Mm -hmm. But there's a guy working with him in the same area that understands the buses, mm -hmm. that can hear the bus drivers, that can hear the, the bus dispatcher. What better person to back him up than a guy that already knows the system? Hmm. And so it was really to give the KCPD officers the ability to move anywhere in Jackson County should the need arise. So just now, a little more flexibility. It, it doesn't help us north of the river. Mm -hmm. The Kansas City guys can still go. I mean, it's Kansas City north of the river. Right. If, if you have a boardwalk square uh, issue, the Kansas City guys can go, but the county guys couldn't because mm -hmm. it's out of their jurisdiction. Right. Like you're in Cass or... If, if I'm in... in uh, I couldn't go to Cass. I couldn't go to Clay. I mm -hmm. couldn't go to Platt. Mm -hmm. Couldn't go to Wyandotte, Leavenworth, or Johnson. Right. So that would require some additional sort it of would communication? require some additional tweaking of the agency mm -hmm. to allow us into a posture that would be accepted both by the Department of Public Safety, Kansas, and Department of Public Safety, Missouri. Hmm. We do not have those permissions yet, so I would I would not want to go much further than that. But I, I think at the, at, when this has run its course, mm -hmm. um, I, I think the ATA will be in a perfect position um, to take care of the, the riders and the employees. That's the key. Right. Can you describe sort of what the day, I mean, we talked about kind of how your day today is situated, but can you talk a little bit about the day-to-day -day of the officers that sure. are actually serving in these capacities? Sure. This is a, this is a rainy day. Mm -hmm. um, we started out today with... Uh, uh, with four requests for um, uh, safe space. Are you familiar with the safe space program? Uh -uh. The safe space program is one that was, I believe, started in our area by uh, Quick Trip. Mm -hmm. Any person who feels that they're threatened or in some imminent danger can go to any Quick Trip and say, I need a safe space. They will remove them to a rear office, close the door, and sit with them until the proper authority responds. Okay. We had four, uh, and, and buses, by the way, have, have uh, entered into that program, and buses mm -hmm. are considered safe space. If you're being pursued by guys that want to do you harm, you can jump on a bus and say, I need a safe space, and they will take you away from that situation. Mm -hmm. um, all four of our safe space requests for today were because guys didn't want to get wet. So it's a, is it something that's sort they of... They were uh, abusing the system. Yeah. The officers immediately dealt with it, got it sorted out, explained uh, to these guys, uh, no, you're not in an emotional distress. You just don't want to get wet. Right. Uh, and we're not going to stop the bus and do all these things to accommodate that. But if you have a child who's lost, mm -hmm. if you have uh, someone who's being pursued by an opponent, uh, if you have a person who's suffering from an emotional situation that... Uh, causes them concern. They can come to a bus and say, I need safe space, and they will get an immediate officer response. That's what we did all morning. And so is it just one officer working days, one officer working nights? There's one deputy and one Kansas City. Okay. Day and night. Okay, so a total of four guys <clears throat> that are total pretty of much four. dedicated to it? Dedicated to it. Now, we also have approximately 40 officers. Um, all are currently Kansas City because we've just opened up the process to deputies. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have 40 uh, uh, men and women who ride off duty on schedules that we set up, on specific routes that we set up. Oh, really? So See, I've never encountered one, and I've done some, some riding on public transport. Uh, most of it, uh, I will... I will I don't know that I really want to say where we put them. Yeah, you don't have to double at your sources and methods. But, but, but I will say that we put them on the routes where they are most prone 
uh, to come in contact with, with folks that uh, later might, in might, the might, evenings, maybe early in the morning. Uh, type uh, of everything right now is, is later, for the most part, is later in the evening. Uh, early in the morning, I do have one officer uh, who goes to 10th and Main, the, the bus mm -hmm. exchange center, uh, and untangles all of that every single morning. Just to make sure that there is some sort of adult supervision. That's exactly right. That's and he's been doing it for some years, and he's very, very good at it. Um, um, Tom Cannon is okay. his name, KCPD, mm -hmm. Footbeat Downtown Officer. Perfect guy to do it. He works the the Footbeat Downtown. This is a downtown assignment. He comes in before work and does a couple hours hmm. for that. And then we have officers from throughout the department who sign up for specific days. And generally, we will have at least two of them out there in the system uh, most every day of the week. Hmm. And have you found that the sort of the schedule for these guys and uh, men and women, is, is there an example maybe that you've seen thus far in your, I know it's only been a month and a half, where they've been able to prevent an issue by being in the right place at the right time? You know, the thing that I hear most often from, from these folks, most of whom I know, mm -hmm. um, they tell me that, and, and the question was posed to me early on, uniform or, or undercover? Mm -hmm. I am not a fan of undercover officers on a bus. For Wouldn't this, provide as much deterrence, well, right? The, 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 precisely. Mm -hmm. The number one thing I hear from these officers is when they're on the bus and someone gets on or several guys uh, get on, uh, they see the officer and they immediately get off. You know that something has been deterred. Right. You don't know what. Um, it's probably best left that way. But, but, but it is uh, the whole purpose is for the riders to feel comfortable and for the potential offenders to be concerned. And this is uh, this is what uh, what they do now. When they're on a bus, their backup are those guys in the cars, the full time guys, right. the county deputy, or the KCPD on nights, for example. And they might just be kind of driving around, or are they are they home based uh, here? No, they're driving around. They're yeah. in the field. Okay. They're in the field. They start and stop in the field. The only reason they come here is uh, routine paperwork on occasion, but not very long. Well, and I wanted to ask a little bit about your background, too, because mm -hmm. I understand that you spent a couple of decades with the Kansas City Police Department. I did. And so you sort of have an idea about how this kind of stuff works. You mentioned that you know the many of these people personally. Uh, what, what do you take with you from your previous experience at KCPD and your present role? You know, I, I, uh, I went to the KCPD as a reserve officer mm -hmm. in uh, 1980. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in, um, I was an Army officer assigned here in Kansas City. I was the I was the Army representative to the Federal Aviation Administration mm -hmm. uh, downtown, and I, I basically uh, was responsible for special operations in the national airspace system nationwide. But I based here. Mm -hmm. Your pilot? Uh, I'm a pilot. Uh, when I came home on Fridays, uh, no kids. Uh, a very independent wife, and mm -hmm. I thought uh, I she didn't want you something. tailing her around all day. Nah, she didn't <laughs> want me tailing her around all day. <laughs> sure. Um, so I went through the reserve program with KCPD, graduated from the academy, and every Friday night for 27 years, I went to work for the KCPD. Mm -hmm. I was working for the uh, Army full time. Uh, later on, I, re I retired from the Army in 1993. I went to the Academy for a year as a KCPD employee, mm -hmm. uh, as a supervisor of defensive tactics and firearms. And uh, after a year there, frankly, I was offered a, a, an opportunity by Lamar Hunt, mm -hmm. who owned the Hunt Midwest uh, and Hunt Entertainment Systems, mm -hmm. to come and deal with, let's, let's say, come and deal with a situation within his company uh, that concerned him. I did that and wound up doing it for 15 years. A situation within his company that That's concerned him. That's all I've got. It's, it has, it's, it's, yes. Seems very general, but I won't I ask the, you for I any became, more. I became the director of security <laughs> mm -hmm. for Hunt Midwest Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, it was not just one item. Safety of kids, safety and proprietary uh, uh, programs involving money, Mm -hmm. uh, all, all those sort of things. 
Uh, I did that uh, happily for 15 years and um, uh, got a phone call in uh, 08 from Mike Sharp, who had been my friend for many, many years, that he was running for sheriff. And he asked me if, if elected if I would come with him to be the undersheriff for the county. The undersheriff actually does most of the day-to-day -day running of the office, mm -hmm. leaving the sheriff free to do the more political and community outreach. Right, make appearances, show up press conferences, sure. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I laughed and I said, sure, Mike, if, uh, if you're elected, I'd be glad to do that. I didn't think in a million years that, that he was as politically connected as he was, but he did a, a tremendous win. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I gladly went with him. You thought on the off chance that he wins, sure, I'll do it. You know, I wouldn't say that <laughs> yeah. on the record because he, he, he reached your newspaper. Right. Uh, but but I was, I was uh, pleasantly surprised when he won. Um, and so for the last nine years, I've run the patrol, uh, SWAT, communications, traffic, uh, uh, parts of the, of the sheriff's office while Ben Kenny, the other undersheriff, mm -hmm. did investigations, judicial security, um, and general services. Okay. So the, the last nine years I've been the patrol, essentially the patrol and SWAT commander for the sheriff. Um, we work routinely with bus supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, a problem at a bus stop which comes out as a disturbance the person you always run into as a, as a police officer is that bus supervisor. Mm -hmm. So I've been dealing with those guys from both Kansas City through the county. Mm -hmm. um, and, and frankly, the last time I dealt with a road supervisor, I ran into a young man who had worked for me mm -hmm. at Worlds of Fun. He's now a bus supervisor. Funny. So it, Small it, world, huh? it, all, it all turns around. So right. that's, that's kind of my background. It's, uh, it's, it's military. I was a combat guy for, for my whole career. Uh, late in career, I got into the special operations arena, uh, largely involving uh, counter-narcotics in the National Airspace System. And then academy training, um, corporate security for 15 years, mm -hmm. and then uh, the sheriff's office for nine, and then here. And what was it that drew you here? Probably my interface with the ATA involving the development of this program to bring the deputies. Hmm. Um, uh, in, in speaking with, with Robbie, uh, who you have to remember, I knew at the county. Right. I knew Robbie when Robbie, uh, before he lost his sight, Robbie right. was, a, was an integral part uh, of, of, of county oversight. Mm -hmm. And I knew him there, and, and when I was able to work with him here to bring these two deputies, the the opportunity popped up. They had had some vacancies, and, and uh, he said, "Would you be interested?" And I said, "Sure." Mm -hmm. And then he said, "Fill out an application." <laughs> oh, I which, thought you were just going to give it to which me. Which I did. Oh no, no, <laughs> I had to go through an application process and an interview and everything else. Oh. Uh, but it's different for me. I mean, I'm not. Uh, uh, I see what needs to be done in terms of preparing the organization. Uh, for the out years, mm -hmm. and and I always work, always have uh, with a five year plan, and mm -hmm. I have a five year plan. What's the five year plan? Uh, well, here? I'm not going to tell you all of the five year plan because it goes right back to the things we we talked about. Um, my plan at the end of five years would be to have a security apparatus in place that serves this ATA on both sides of the state line equally. Uh, with uh, with uh, qualified folks who want to be here uh, and who uh, who are able to protect the riders and the ATA's property and employees. Mm -hmm. That's that's critical. Um, you, you don't understand the gravity of, of of what we deal with unless you are, let's say, a female bus operator at two in the morning on Independence Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as we spoke of before the interview actually started, Independence Avenue is totally different day and night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely and totally different. What's there in the day is not what's there at, at the night. Mm -hmm. And these men and women serve uh, all of our community, whether it's issues in the, in the urban core, um, 
whether it would be along the Argentine or the Quindaro districts or out to the Legends, mm -hmm. uh, as long as we're operating, they're driving. Mm -hmm. And just because you're driving at 2 in the morning doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a guy. Mm -hmm. Could just as easily be a female. We have a lot of female operators. Mm -hmm. um, my responsibility is to make sure that they are safe, that folks, uh, their deportment remains uh, consistent with agency policy, mm -hmm. uh, and to do everything I can to remove any negative element uh, from the process. So, and we have some of that. By and large, um, the folks that use the system are folks that uh, have somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I rode. I rode. Uh, I, I will admit, I was not a frequent user of inner city transport when I came here because I live north of the river. I live in Platte County. Mm -hmm. I would have to drive to a bus stop just, right. that would be a five mile drive just mm -hmm. to get to the nearest mm -hmm. bus stop. But I went out the other night and rode the, the Kansas side up and down the Argentine, up and down the Quindaro, all the way to the Legends Village West mm -hmm. in plain clothes. Um, I stood directly beside a Kansas City police officer at 10th and Main who was riding that off duty mm -hmm. shift directly beside him for about 10 minutes and engaged him in idle conversation. He had no idea who I was. Mm -hmm. He was a, a young man. He would know me if he had thought about it, Right. but he didn't know who I was and the bus driver, uh, bus mm -hmm. operator didn't know who I was. Maybe he would recognize your name but not your face? Oh, he'd certainly know my name. Mm -hmm. he, he would. Mm -hmm. uh, but having never dealt with him personally, don't know that, that the uh, gray-haired guy in a, in a uh, Patriot Games ball cap uh, was necessarily somebody he would know. I was, I was not surprised any way other than pleasantly in, in, um, in what I saw riding, riding the bus from the legends to here and from here to the legends. Uh, folks coming to and from work, uh, folks coming from, from out on the town, Mm -hmm. um, one handicapped uh, gentleman in a wheelchair that had to be attended, boarded, strapped down and all that sort of thing. Um, I was not surprised. Uh, since then I've ridden the Prospect, the Truce, the Main Street, uh, the streetcar to mm -hmm. find a comparison. I, I didn't see a real purpose in, right, for me riding mm -hmm. the streetcar. Right. But I've done that now to, just to see the comparison. Mm -hmm. um, the the Part of the organization that comes from Johnson County here is almost entirely commuter. Mm -hmm. uh, very few issues on that right. side of the organization. Um, uh, morning and evening, the folks that are going back and forth north-south, primarily computer, uh, mm -hmm. commuter, guys mm -hmm. and gals going to work. Um, beyond that, sometimes we have folks that have nothing more pressing to do than get on the bus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those folks are an issue, largely uh, emotional issues. Right. Uh, they may not have other alternatives for transportation, and sometimes those emotional issues will manifest themselves in disagreements with either other riders or with the operators. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they don't most stop of fast what, enough when they pull the, uh, they pull the wire or something. Well, they they uh, they go to sleep. They they. Uh, they're allowed to make one circuit of the run, mm -hmm. and then they have to uh, deplane or disembark. Mm -hmm. They have nowhere else to necessarily go, and sometimes they don't want to do that, so mm -hmm. there's an argument. But uh, uh, we have had no significant events other than one traffic accident uh, uh, since I've been here. Hmm. Um, we have had several events where uh, folks committed a crime having nothing to do with the ATA, and made their getaway on the bus. Hmm. Didn't get far right. uh, because of the communication not only between the KCPD and the bus dispatcher, but also the bus dispatcher and the KCPD. It goes both ways. Gotcha. And, and we've, we've apprehended some folks that uh, needed to be apprehended. But um, largely it's, it's, it's connecting people to places. Right. And, and as long as, uh, as folks uh, don't annoy other people, 
uh, it's a it's a great ride. I, I had I had a lot of, actually had a lot of fun <laughs> on a Friday night going back and forth to the legends with. Uh, then you get some characters. Oh, there's a few. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. The, so most of them are not. Most of them are just folk. And that is all for my conversation with Hugh Mills, the safety and security chief of the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority. That, however, did not conclude my conversation with Mills. For anyone interested in history, I'd like to direct you to a future episode of the podcast regarding a book written by Mills called Low Level Hell, which details true stories from Mills about his time spent as a scout pilot during the Vietnam War. During the second part of our conversation, Mills talks in detail about some of the stories in his initial book and discusses some of the work he's been doing on a potential follow-up project. Until then, this is your host, Paul Thompson. Thanking you for listening.